What an appropriate title for Lord Artorius. I believe in him. As long as we have Shepherd Artorius, we'll make it through this era of disaster. Shepherd Artorius? How pompous can you get? Artorius has already seized control of all religious and secular power in Midgand. But now that he's taken on this new title, he's no longer just an authority figure. He's become the very hope of the masses. A dangerous opponent indeed. After seeing that, will you still fight him? Of course I will. He could be a god for all I care. I'll have my vengeance, no matter what. That ceremony was simply fantastic. Lord Artorius's speech was brilliant, of course, but Prince Percival was really something too. He raises up Artorius to help the country and its people, then willingly steps down. Now that's what I call a king. You think so? Well, to me, he just looks like a wimp. He may look that way, but he has a great inner strength. He's excelled as a scholar and a leader since he was young. His only hobby is falconry, but sadly, I hear he hasn't had the time for it lately. You seem like a big supporter of his. Well, he's got two younger brothers, but just between you and me, they're dolts. Worse, they hang with a bad crowd. If anything were to happen to Prince Percival, the future of Midgand would be bleak. I see. So everyone's hopes are riding on him, then. Which means Midgand's vulnerable without him. He may be the shepherd now, but no one knows who he was before the advent, or what he did. No, they don't. But he showed up one day with a malak in tow, routed the demons, and formed a band of skilled young exorcists. That sounds pretty suspicious. Right? But the kingdom readily acknowledged his abilities and his conviction, and threw its full support behind him. Maybe he plans on usurping power for himself. Not likely. He's worked tirelessly to rebuild the church and state, and to shore up the royal family's position. Lining his pockets from the state coffers, then? Not the slightest chance. Rather, he's got all the other higher-ups worried he's working himself to death. Then what's he after? Hmm. Maybe there is no ulterior motive. Maybe he is our shepherd. Whatever the case, if he hadn't shown up when he did three years ago, Midgen would be a smoking ruin. Greetings, Magilu's Menagerie. You've come to exactly the right place. You must be a Bloodwing. What do you want? You already know about the Code Red demons, right? The really strong demons the Abbey wants gone? Yeah. Would you ever consider hunting them down for us? We'll reward you properly. Reward? Why pay us when the Abbey would do it for free? It's complicated. The Abbey is calculating in their deployments, especially where Code Red demons are concerned. I get it. They'll only act if they determine the demon would cause more harm than the losses they'd incur in battling it. That does seem logical. But sometimes people have lost a loved one to such a demon. Or sometimes they have a connection to the person the demon used to be. Wherever there's a Code Red demon, you can bet there are people willing to pay good money to have it killed. <sighs> and let me guess, that's where the Blood Wings come in. Exactly. There are Blood Wings all throughout Midgant who have information on these Code Red demons. If you defeat a demon and report back to my comrades, they'll make sure you're well compensated. All right, I understand. But I won't make any promises. That's fine. No sense in drawing up a contract when the hunter probably won't survive anyway. If you get results, let us know. We'll hold up our end. That being said, I'd feel guilty if I didn't help out at least a little, so... Here, take this. Those Bloodwings are definitely a rough crowd. To be fair, 
Things are never that straightforward when you're dealing with demons. All that matters is that there's something in it for us if we hunt those Code Red demons. The only thing better than fighting formidable foes is getting paid for it. Just remember that these Code Red demons are tough enough to make the Abbey shiver. We'd be wise not to underestimate them. We should talk to those Bloodwings before considering any of the marks. They might have information that will help us prepare. Yeah, and we better remember to upgrade our equipment. Right. Hey, Lafayette. What is it, Rogero? Mabo Curry. Huh? Oh. Uh. <laughs> You're an interesting one. You like Mabo Curry that much, huh? It smells good. And it's creamy and kind of spicy. Eating it made me feel nice. I'd say you love it then. Do all Malakim have such an appetite? Each has their own tastes. Some eat a lot, some eat a little. Just like humans or demons. What do you like, Aizen? Drinks, I suppose. What else? Uh, pretty much just drinks. Don't you like anything else? Is it a problem if I don't? No. I'm just wondering. For me, it's drinks and candied sweet potatoes. That's where you boil strips of sweet potato in oil and then coat them in sugar, right? Yeah, I never get tired of them. So you like to drink, but you've also got a sweet tooth? Yeah. Is that so strange? No. Candied sweet potatoes? Sounds good. Uh... There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just a sign that you're alive, remember? Right. Another victory.
Have you heard? The Abbey is building a new base. I hear it's a huge temple in the middle of some mountains near a site of ancient ruins. If they've got time to build a temple, they should use it to kill more demons instead. You sure you want to talk like that here? Ha! I'm different from all those losers who swoon over the shepherd's pretty words and ignore reality. No one's found a way to cure demon blight yet, and demons are still swarming everywhere. Sure, maybe things are not as bad as they could have been, but we still have no idea what's going to happen next. Think about it! Demons could be infiltrating the city as we speak, and we'd be none the wiser! Yep, you're completely right. All right, the guards are gone. Let's move in. Benwick and the crew did a fine job. Red crates. These must be our targets. The seal of Midgand Cathedral? Should we look inside? There's no need. Burn them, Lafayette. Okay. We're done here. Let's go. That storm cost too much time. I must report to Lord Artorias as soon as possible. <gasps> it's you! Oh, hey. The crybaby. Eleanor Hume! You really want to fight, don't you? Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just try! What do they have? Willing to fight without your Malachine? No! You set the storehouse ablaze?! The people have worked so hard to withstand this time of crisis! How can you destroy what they have so painstakingly built?! Because I'm not human. You'll pay for this, you demon! More Malachim up her sleeves! I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Come and face me now, demon! He's adorable. Uh, am I? Ooh, I found you at last! Voice. The Enfu, you traitor! You'll never leave my clutches again! Not her! No! What are you doing? Get out there and fight! Hey, look! Is that smoke? It is! Fire! The fire has spread enough. Let's get going. You're coming with us. Madam Exorcist! What happened? Oh, you're badly hurt. I can wait. Gather the people and put out that fire. Y yes, madam. Tell me, do you know what was being kept in that warehouse? Um, mostly nectar, I believe. Vast stores of the medicine provided by High Priest Gideon to be distributed to doctors across the land. Medicine given by the church? Why would anybody destroy it?
Whew. Looks like we're in the clear. <laughs> Misfortune and anguish! I had that little turncoat right in front of me! Well, at least now I know where to find him! That weird little Moloch was the one you were looking for? The very same. The Moloch Bienfu! A creature of unfathomable wickedness and beguiling cuteness who broke the heart of this wretched maiden! <laughs> Once I finally catch him, who knows what I'll be capable of? Not sure I get it. Me neither. Good. Pray that you never do. Let... Let's go back and report our success. What's the deal with you and that exorcist, Eleanor? She had tears in her eyes when we first saw her at Northgand. Velvet poked fun at her, calling her the crybaby exorcist. Why would an exorcist cry? Sacrificing the individual for the good of the many is part of Artorius's philosophy. She seemed troubled by that. She's naive. That she can still carry on shows just how strong she is. It looks like they don't hand out the rank of Praetor to just anyone. Hmm? Just stay sharp around her. That's all. By the way, was that Bienfu character that Magilu was after really a Moloch? He may look strange, but yes. He's still a Moloch. That means Magilu is an exorcist. Why does she call herself a witch then? If she got locked up in that prison, she must have been kicked out of the Abbey. Or she could be a fraud. Yeah. Even if she wasn't an exorcist, she could still perform some tricks with a Moloch like that. I will protect you, Madam Eleanor. Fish me now, demon. <laughs> right? <laughs> Was that laughter? Uh, I'm sorry. Why apologize? Bienfu is funny, right? Right. Then if you want to laugh, laugh! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> if you think that's funny, you should give it a try for yourself. Say, Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Knock it off. Huh? What's the problem? People are staring. Don't attract attention. I'm sorry. <sighs> She's so uptight. Let's try it together later, Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Well, we've learned one thing coming to the capital. The Abbey and Shepherd Artorias have expanded their power immensely. They might as well be the Empire now. They have the undying support of the populace. The Shepherd, savior of humanity. <laughs> I wonder what he meant by the blessings of the Empyrean Enominat. That's what they call the gods they worship in church, right? The Empyreans? He promised a lot in that speech. But can he really command such a power? I have no idea. Not even we Malakim know of them beyond the stories and legends. He called Enominat the fifth Empyrean. There should only be four, one ruling each element. Is he talking about a new Empyrean? Have you heard anything, Luffy said? Sorry. I don't know anything about this. It doesn't matter. We should be careful about taking his words at face value. The man is no saint. He'll stop at nothing to achieve his aims. But there's no way he could have a god at his beck and call. Don't underestimate the Abbey. Trust me, I'm not. That's why I'm using the Shadow Guild to help us hunt them down. And to make sure that I kill him. Trouble at the docks, was there? Well, so long as the job was done. Good luck. I look forward to hearing your report. A scholar missing on the road to Gallus Lake. Strange request. If they know where he vanished, why don't they just look for him there? Exactly. And what's so illegal about a missing persons case that you gotta go to the underworld? I can think of a few possibilities. But our job isn't to ask questions.
Unarmed. Hey, that noisy demon looks pretty strong. Think it might be one of those Code Red demons? Doesn't matter to me. I'd rather not waste my time fighting it if I don't need to. I don't see it as a waste of time. Look, the Abbey only has a handful of exorcists strong enough to take something like this down, right? Probably. I'd say Praetors like Lady Teresa and the Legates could probably take it on. And those guys are all your enemies, right? <sighs> I see where you're going with this. The Abbey is strong, both in its individual members and as an organization. And if we're to close the gap between us and them, we need to fight strong opponents like this demon. That's what I would do. But you're free to make your own decision. All right. I'll concede the point. But we should determine just how strong it is first. I don't want us to bite off more than we can chew. That goes without saying. I'd rather not get myself killed due to inadequate preparation. You don't have to worry that much. If you want to go fight, I'll help keep you safe myself. I promise. I don't recall asking for your protection. You don't need to. Thank you. 